perhaps the politicians in the UK are simply put off by your views. You said you would ban pork-free meals for Muslim children in the towns that you will control. One of your allies in Holland said that he would take care of the number of Moroccans in one town. Perhaps British politicians just don't want to have anything to do with you because of some of your views you hold. Non mais madame, vous ne pouvez pas parler au nom des Britanniques et je ne suis pas sûr d'ailleurs que l'ensemble des dirigeants britanniques puissent parler euh, en leur nom. Il faut attendre les élections pour cela et ce sont les Britanniques qui vont en l'occurrence voter et qui vont indiquer quelle est leur volonté par rapport à l'Union européenne. Mais, mais, mais madame, je vous remercie d'être l'avocat de ce rapprochement. Bon, euh, Mais moi, euh, j'ai lancé un appel à l'ensemble des patriotes euh, européens. Euh, ceux qui disent non, ils disent non. Je veux dire, euh, voilà, ils font ce qu'ils veulent. Euh, je trouve ça regrettable parce que l'Union européenne est une structure très puissante. Les technocrates européens ont pris énormément de pouvoir sur, notre, euh, sur nos peuples. Et je pense qu'on serait... Euh, voilà, plus on sera nombreux mais à s'opposer... Understandably, do not appeal to British politicians because they can be at worst offensive and at best prejudiced. You said, for example, that Muslims in France were almost like having the Nazi occupation. Madame, tout cela est un vaste torrent de calomnies qui vise de la part des dirigeants européens à décrédibiliser That's les mouvements politiques. That's what you said. You said there were more burkas, more veils, Madame, praying Madame, in the street with African occupation. Madame, Madame, vous avez l'air. Vous avez l'air beaucoup plus intéressé par les questions que vous posez que par les réponses que je vous apporte. Je ne trouve pas ça très respectueux. Bon, euh, donc je vous le dis très clairement, je pense que la lutte contre le fondamentalisme islamique est absolument essentielle dans nos pays. Ce fondamentalisme islamique, il vise, euh, par l'intermédiaire de groupes politico-religieux, à imposer les lois de la charia à la place des lois de nos pays, à la place de nos valeurs, à la place de nos traditions, de nos mœurs, de nos codes, de nos modes de vie. Je le refuse, que les choses soient très claires. Je pense que ces fondamentalistes islamiques sont dangereux et ça n'est pas une lutte contre les musulmans. C'est une lutte contre les fondamentalistes islamiques. Ceci est très clair. Je n'admets pas que l'on viole les lois de mon pays. Je n'admets pas que l'on prie dans la rue au, au dépens de l'ensemble des règles euh, qui régissent la société française. Je n'admets pas, madame, que l'on impose des interdits alimentaires dans un pays euh, qui, euh, dont le fonctionnement est fondé sur la laïcité. Je défends l'identité de mon pays et j'ai le droit de le faire. Et de plus en plus de Français sont d'accord avec moi. And there's nothing offensive towards European Muslims, in your view, about saying those kinds of things, saying that it's, it's against the identity of France or somehow unacceptable for Muslims to be praying in public places? No, no madame, ce qui est offensant, c'est ce que vous faites vous, c'est-à-dire faire un amalgame entre les musulmans et les fondamentalistes islamiques. Ça, c'est offensant pour eux, car il y a beaucoup de musulmans français qui sont à nos côtés et qui sont euh, avec nous pour lutter contre le fondamentalisme islamique, qui aujourd'hui est euh, l'idéologie qui crée le plus de terreur et le plus de malheur très probablement dans le monde. Is your invitation to Nigel Farage to be part of your campaign still open? Non, manifestement, Nigel Farage a choisi de faire campagne avec un candidat euh, qui fait 1% en France, qui s'appelle Nicolas Dupont-Aignan. Je, je continue à, à m'interroger sur les raisons de ce choix, puisque Nicolas Dupont-Aignan euh, a des choix politiques extrêmement proches des nôtres. But would you hope to work with him in future? Oui, je passe au-dessus euh, des considérations euh, personnelles, y compris même du mal que l'on nous fait. Et je pense à l'intérêt supérieur des peuples européens. Donc je conserverai les bras ouverts tant qu'il sera l'intérêt des peuples que nous puissions nous réunir dans un projet commun pour combattre l'Union européenne. Well, in a statement to Newsnight, UKIP said that it was not interested in any deal with Ms. Le Pen or her party because of what they called prejudices and anti-Semitism in particular within her party. Tonight we learned that... Uh, as I go over the positions of the uh, two remaining political candidates in the upcoming French election, uh, Marine Le Pen of the National Front and um, you know, Francois Hollande's former uh, economic minister, uh, Emmanuel Macron. Oh, I'm not good at 
pronouncing French things. I, I noticed a few people who identify as liberal are making the same mistake with Le Pen that they made with Trump. You know, um, fascism uh, has always used the the language of economic populism to uh, expand their uh, base of support. So, you know, uh, uh, you're not going to get as many uh, people voting for you if your single platform is about ethnic nationalism or, uh, you know, anti-immigrant xenophobic sentiment. You're just not gonna. So, when you examine Trump and Le Pen, you'll see this through line of, of making uh, economic promises that seem um, socialistic in nature, and it, it, it will it will persuade liberals to make a case against um, at least at least when comparing uh, the 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 Trump Clinton dynamic with with the uh, dynamics of Macron. And Le Pen, you have an election with one establishment candidate who is a neoliberal capitalist who is uh, interested in uh, so called uh, anti labor uh, capitalist reforms, uh, deregulation, uh, austerity, particularly in, in Macron's case. Uh, Macron really was the architect of uh, socialist Francois Hollande's downfall. Um, he was a signal to the EU that France was ready to uh, liberalize its economy. And um, the thing with, with, with economic liberalization, um, and we're talking in, 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 in you know the European sense, which is to say... Um, Liberalization is is, is uh, basically a, a component of this free market uh, capitalism, this unfettered corporatism, sort of soft fascism. Um, I think the French people are in on economic issues. The French people are in a pinch that the American people can uh, identify with. Uh, in reference to choosing between a, a, a awful corporate candidate that is going to uh, be socially liberal, but is going to implement a brutal regime of anti-populist um, slashing of social programs and, and social subsidies in Macron and, and, and in America's case it was Clinton and um, a, a, a xenophobic racist candidate who is going to uh, pay lip service to populist economics and then come into office and um, enact the kind of economic program that Trump has and then just use the power you gave them to implement a bunch of anti-immigration uh, policies and uh, authoritarian nationalist uh, programs. Um, I would not give power to someone like Le Pen based on the history of La Front Nationale, which was founded by her father in 1972. Um, Jean Le Pen. Let me check my notes, man. I started doing notes so I can actually get the facts right, but... <laughs> 
Jean Marie Le Pen. Founded the Front National in 1972. He founded it with two very, very uh, dangerous men. Uh, one of whom was a member of the OAS terrorist organization uh, during the French Algerian conflict, and one who was Vichy, militantly Vichy. Vichy to the point that he's well known for having been to the right of the Vichy government. And these, these were Nazi collaborators in France. These are people who, um, you know, did the whole concentration camps, uh, human liquidation program thing. And this guy, uh, Roland Galcher, <laughs> thought that they were too moderate. You know, when, when, when you think that a, an, an existing fascist regime is too moderate, you probably aren't the guy who's going to uh, fi uh, found a tolerant political organization. Now, is it plausible? Because some people have brought up the arguments about uh, the Democratic Party's history with American uh, white nationalist terrorist organizations like the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, firstly... The American Democratic Party, although it was infiltrated at one point by the Ku Klux Klan, it was not founded by Klansmen. Um, it wasn't founded after the Civil War by uh, members of the Confederacy. Even though a lot of uh, Confederates jumped ship into the Democratic Party. Uh, both major U.S. parties supported white supremacy. Abraham Lincoln explicitly so. Uh, so, on the U.S. spectrum, you, you, you don't really have uh, you know, a political party that you can sort of say has clean hands, but neither one of those U.S. political parties was founded by uh, war criminals and terrorists. And La Front Nationale was founded explicitly by um, these anti-Semites. Um, you know, these uh, race purists, including um, Marine Le Pen's father. Now, should Marine Le Pen be punished for the history of La Front Nationale? Look, you know, you don't have to be beholden to your parents. You know, uh, uh, um, there are plenty, you know, Reagan, uh, Ronald Reagan's kids are, you know, liberal, democratic, hippie types. You know, they don't. They shouldn't be punished for their dad's war on drugs and all that stuff. But, um, I don't see any sort of substantial difference in Marine Le Pen's platform that would imply that somehow La Front Nationale was no longer uh, a political organization uh, founded on the exploitation of hate and in the shadow of a uh, holocaust. Um, so Marine Le Pen, I think, you know, she kept her father in uh, an honorary role, right? That she had a, she had an opportunity to push her dad out as you know something symbolic about the organization wanted to reform and move on. She pushed him out and then kept him on in um, you know honorary role as a leader within the organization. Window dressing. So, just like Jean-Marie Le Pen uh, ran on anti-Semitism in the 1970s because uh, that was the mainstream form of xenophobia and hatred at the time, you can't run on anti-Semitism in Europe. At least not explicitly. So what you have is uh, the new Jews. That's what I call the Muslims, particularly in, in, the, the, the Muslim population in Europe is basically the, 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 the scapegoat that the Jewish population was at the beginning of the 20th century. It's uh, considered socially acceptable to be Islamophobic. It's considered a relatively liberal position to be Islamophobic uh, under the flag of um, border security and uh, terrorism prevention, um, which I think is is either um, 
tone deafness, meaning that uh, these people are either fools who really believe what they're saying uh, isn't based on uh, scapegoating and, and vilifying a group of people universally, um, or it's cynical, meaning that uh, it's dog whistling. They, they want to use the political capital of scapegoating, but they don't want to pay the cost of being explicitly hateful. A lot of this is the fault of financial elites in France, just like the, the, the election of Trump. Um, there's a significant component of economic policy. You know, the story in France is the same story as America, just at a different pace. So, um, a lot of, uh, for example, the, the, a lot of people that support Le Pen in the country are in marginalized communities that used to uh, thrive on factory work, particularly on uh, production of steel. Uh, France has a lot of subsidies uh, farming and has um, quite a few nationalized industries that, that actually were nationalized in the 1980s. Um, and it has a very generous welfare state. The number one gripe from these aggrieved voters who are looking at Le Pen is that the, the French state failed to nationalize the steel industry. Nationalizing industries is a fundamental component of socialism, but it is also a dangerous component of nationalist socialism, also referred to in the modern vernacular as fascism. Um, this uh, this uh, advisor to Trump, uh, Steve Bannon, made a point that he considered himself a national Leninist. It's it's the same program. It's the same plan. It's the same recipe. People want socialism. And what people want even more than socialism is socialism for their specific group. There's nothing more populist. There's no powerful, more, there's no more powerful political cocktail than mixing the the populism of socialism and economic policies and mixing that with uh, the 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 generic populism of a nationalist platform. So. Does does it sound like Marine Le Pen wants to uh, it, 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 that she's pro worker? Sounds that way. Seems unlikely. And even if she is, she is pro worker in a very narrow sense. She wants to purge uh, people from France. She's willing to she's willing to uh, uh, reach full socialism. As long as it's just white French people. Uh, Spencer is the same kind of thing. Uh, Richard Spencer in the States is this guy who wants basically a socialist state with free health care, uh, but for whites only. They're, 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 those two philosophies cancel each other out. You can't be for equality and superiority in the same breath. Sorry. 